Today we're going to talk about my favorite tools that I use every day. I have broken a lot of tools to figure out which ones I like. And if one of these tools were to break today, I would buy the same exact one tomorrow because I've had so many bad experiences with other tools. First set of tools we're going to cover is the cutters, the strippers, and the crimpers. And these need to be high quality tools because if any of these are not, your entire job could suffer. So first, the crimps need to be perfect and you need a true cold weld, a gas tight joint. You need a perfect strip so that all of the conductors are present. And then you need to cut it so that it's flush and flat so that you can strip it and crimp it properly. So these are very important tools and you need to spend money on them. First tool is the cable cut. I use this every day for small and large wires. At first I thought I could only use it for small wires, but I use it up to about two or even zero gauge wire. So these are awesome. I would not use the stripper down here unless it's a solid core conductor. I do not like it for stranded. I don't use the stripper at all because there are better options. Next we have the CHP 170 and these are great for snipping off the tiny little pieces of wire after you're done soldering. You will also find a million other reasons to use these once you have them and this is like my fourth pair. I have broken these, I have melted them, I've done everything to these so these are awesome. And they're only $5, so you need this. Now we have the wire strippers. So for most people in most jobs, anything under 10 gauge, you need to use this. This will give you a perfect strip every time. Some people complain about the price because it's $30, but you will not find something better. This thing kicks butt. We have a 12 gauge wire, and there's a small 12 on the top. You fit it in right here and you squeeze just like that. And that is a perfect strip. None of the conductors have been damaged. And if you want to trim it, you can use this cutter on the inside of the stripper. So nice and easy. And there are knockoff versions available, so do not buy those. Buy the Kleins or buy another name brand that's UL listed. Next, we have these wire strippers, and I do not like using these for most jobs, but if you have very small wires like balance leads, these work great. And all you need to do is stick the wire in here and I typically like to press down on the top so it grips it and then you squeeze but sometimes it can hurt the conductor. These are great for very weird cables, strange shape or multiple conductors in a single um, sheath. Like when I strip the Cat6 cable, this is what I used. Another benefit is you can strip multiple wires. So if I'm doing a balance lead for a 48 volt system, I'll put like three or four in there and strip them all at the same time. But these are preferred. These are nice to have on hand though and I could not live without either one of them in my toolbox. Next tool is a cable stripper and if you work on large gauge wires for low voltage, you absolutely need a high quality cable stripper. There are lots of options on the market that are knockoffs, so be very careful. The knockoffs are absolutely horrible. But this one by Jokari is perfect, so let me show you how it works. You have a tiny blade and a little holder, and you stick the cable inside like this, and you spin it around. And depending on how thick the insulation is, will determine how much you need to adjust the little blade. And you adjust the blade by spinning this. Typically, I have it set to right here, and it works perfectly on most insulations. And check it out. And this is what a good strip looks like. None of the conductors have been touched by the blade of this stripper and all of the strands are present. And this is why you buy high quality tools. You want it to look like this every single time. Now we're gonna talk about crimpers and these are very difficult to choose because I have a couple favorites, but I'm still on the search for the perfect crimper. But first we have a ratcheting type, and this is a good standard one if you're building one system with UL listed standard connectors with insulation. If you do not have insulation or you're using waterproof connectors, these will not work at all. But these are great to have on hand, and I love using them when I have standard connectors. And here we have a 12 gauge wire, standard connector, we squeeze. You want to ensure that the crimper is also crimping the insulation so that there's strain protection and that's it. Now we're going to talk about my favorite crimpers. I do not like ratcheting crimpers for personal everyday jobs. We have channel locks and we have these ones by Commercial Electric. So these ones are great for small wires. The leverage, the indentation, everything works well for small wires. And what I use for larger wires up to about 6 gauge are these. So these are really nice because of the amount of leverage and also the space in the indentation. 
These work really well for larger, but these work great. Anything smaller than 14 gauge and I'm using these. And I need both of these. I use these all the time. When it comes to large gauge wires, we have lots of options. And if you're only building one solar power system, the hammer type crimp is great. I've gone through about three of them and I have the highest quality one on my website. But for everyday use with a perfect crimp that matters, I would go with a hydraulic crimper. But there are lots of other options on the market. I also have a three point crimper, which works great for like two watt gauge or four watt gauge wire. But anything less than two gauge, I do not like using it. But what I like about hydraulic crimpers is whether you have a really thick jacket or it's a 4 aught gauge or even a 2 gauge, this will work every single time and give consistent results. But these do like to break, they like to leak, this thing can snap right here. I've had one leak before but it was a cheap Harbor Freight one, so I'm not sure how long this will last me. I actually have a ratcheting type crimper that can work up to 2 gauge and I made a video about it and I really like it and lots of my other forum members like it as well but the problem with this is if you use it every day like me this little head starts getting wobbly and it's gotten so bad that it affects the crimps so I do not recommend this for long-term use if you're building one system these are great I mean I love this thing because you can indoors just ratchet down to two gauge but yeah, if you want a perfect crimp, you're gonna have to get a hydraulic or something else. I really wish they made these better because man, I'm so bummed that it's not working anymore. Actually, I just noticed one of the screws is loose. Maybe I can tighten it. No way, maybe that's what was wrong. Let's crimp a wire real quick. We have a four gauge copper welding cable. Oh, look at that. And it's actually working again. So make sure that you tighten down this screw. Wow, that's great. So now I'm going to use this all the time. These were great for the first couple weeks until that happened. So yeah, I'm super happy. That's great. I didn't even see that screw. I was looking all over the place too. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Tighten that down if it stops working. Next tool is my favorite soldering iron. You guys, this is the best thing on the market. It's, it's the FX 600 and it's by Hako or H A K O. And you can change the temperature and the heads that come with it are incredible. And don't let the size fool you. This is more powerful than those large automotive um, soldering guns. This thing creates so much heat. I've soldered some huge wires with this one alone. Previously, I would take two 60 watt soldering irons and put them on a single soldering joint where this one could do it all by itself. And this one doesn't even cost that much. There are so many people that cheap out on their soldering iron, but do not do that if you want to use it for years on end. You have to spend the money. This thing is incredible. It works every time. And if you have a good soldering iron and a holder and leaded solder and flux, soldering is a lot of fun. I used to hate it until I actually brought the proper tools and I got the proper tips. And you can buy the soldering iron tips on Amazon for super cheap. And I love the soldering iron so much that I would not buy any other brand. I had like five soldering irons. I used to be a drone racer, so I used to solder every single day. Now the next tools are my meters. So we have DC and AC clamp meters. We have one by Southwire and one by Klein. I like the Klein better. It's easier to use. The interface is better. I like the readout. And you need one of these if you're working with DC. This thing you can instantly select DC and then clamp it on a wire. And you know how many amps is going through it. Next, I love Klein's meter. Klein is great. If you don't want to buy Fluke, but you want accurate and strong, durable tools, buy the Klein's. Honestly, I would buy Klein everything. Klein is one of my favorites, and I'm not trying to sound like a fanboy, but they make really good stuff, and this has almost every option around. But if you want to test capacitors and other stuff, this isn't going to work. But if you want a fast, quick meter for volt reading and for ohms, this is great. Look how pretty these are. I love these. These are my favorite freaking meters ever. And I like South Wire, and this one does work really well. The accuracy is great. But look at how ugly that screen is. This one is easier to read. You have black in the back with white, and this one's just your traditional one. These cost the same amount of money. But yeah, I prefer this one over this one any day. Next tool set is insulated ratchets and deep sockets. The reason we need these is if you're working with batteries, these will not short out on the battery terminal. Check this out. 
Do you see how there are no sparks? You can do this all day long. You can drop your tools and nothing bad will happen. And for some battery terminals, you need an extension. If you do not have deep sockets, this will work really well, especially with like fortune lithium iron phosphate cells. So make sure you have these on hand if you need it. These are actually from Harbor Freight. They're super cheap and I love them. I actually love this small one so much that I bought the big one. So I was totally impressed. I thought it would break or something, but it's been quite a few years now and I love these. And the next tools are the screwdrivers. I like stubby screwdrivers, especially for inverter cases, for terminals, all sorts of stuff. You need these. Next, you need some high quality, but small screwdrivers. I have used this for almost every solar charge controller input terminal on the market and it just grips it so nicely. So yeah, definitely get some of these. Next, you need some long screwdrivers. Preferably, they should be insulated. I actually have some right here, but I don't use them that much. I like these ones because the heads really grip the screws, and this flat head is really strong. I can use it with hammers. So yeah, any one will do, but if you need an insulated one, be sure to buy one. These are very important for higher voltage. Or if you're working with battery terminals, insulated tools are the best. Also, you could buy a high quality normal tool, add some heat shrink or electrical tape, and then you can turn it into an insulated tool. So that's always an option as well. Next, you wanna buy some high quality scissors. These are Milwaukee, and I do not try to sound like a fanboy of them, but these kick butt. I love almost all of their products. Next, you need a blade. This can be used for very strange insulation types or for solid gauge wire insulation. So you always want these on hand. Next, a nylon body panel remover. I actually use these for all sorts of strange things. Now this is my favorite tool ever. I use this for every type of project around. It's a Milwaukee impact gun, and this is my second one. The first one I used for like six years straight. And I use this for battery terminals or wood. You can do everything with this. I use it to work on cars. I love this, and my dad loves his too. He's a mechanic, and he uses it on everything as well. Next tool is a Phillips screwdriver with a nice head. <laughs> that sounds wrong. For some reason, this cheap one from Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh, fits so nicely in so many screws. So yeah, you might have to test a few on the market to find the one you like, but this one's great. I actually have two of these because they work so well. And I buy other higher quality tools, but when this one works better than them, I'm sticking with this. Next tool is a 30 ohm resistor for pre-charging caps. So I like this one, it's a 25 watt. These are like about a dollar. Next favorite tool is the Dremel Multimax MM45. I think they have a newer one available with a different locking mechanism. I use the carbide blade because this lasts like 50 times longer than any of their other blades. I hate their other blades, but this thing costs 20 bucks, but it will last you years and years. When I lived in an RV, I would take down entire walls with this. I could cut through PVC, I can cut through metal pipes, you can cut through wires, you can cut through anything. So it's a little slow, but it can do any job. So highly recommend this. Next is a good flashlight. This is a Nightcore, and I've been using this for so many years, and I know there's lots of flashlights on the market, market and people love reviewing them, but this thing is just crazy bright. Like outside at nighttime, it's like a spotlight. It's massive. So you need this. This is also waterproof and it can be charged with a standard USB. So really cool little flashlight. Next is a measuring tape and this is a self locking one. So when you pull it out, it holds it there. And I use these all the time. I have like six of them around the house. But yeah, I love the self-locking ones, they're great. And this is currently my favorite power supply, but I'm trying to find a better one. This is the first one that is not broken. I have broken so many of these over the years. I actually have a broken one right over here. I broke this about a week ago. So they will say that they have certain protection features, but if you use them every single day, especially for battery charging, they just break. They'll start smoking for no reason. This one started smoking too. So yeah, I don't trust these. These are all made from China. You could buy the more expensive one. I could spend $400, but I really don't want to. This one was 45 and I haven't broken it yet. And I'll have a link for all of these products below if you want them. Next is my Milwaukee Jigsaw. And I've had lots of Jigsaw corded and cordless, and this is my absolute favorite. And you know what? I was doubting Milwaukee. I was like, I don't want to spend all that money. That's so stupid. I don't want to be a fanboy. So I bought another cordless Jigsaw and I was like, this thing's 
sucks and the blade wasn't holding right. This thing was getting loose no matter how much I tightened it down. So I got the Milwaukee version and I returned everything else because this thing kicks butt. It's like a hundred bucks and it's so light and portable. I use it to cut everything. But you need to spend the money and get nice jigsaw blades. So these are really nice by Bosch. It's like a multi-pack from Lowe's. I also have Milwaukee's standard drills and other impact gun sizes, but this is my favorite because it's very small, but you guys need to also buy high quality drill bits. I would get all carbon, but that thing is like 60 or 70 bucks for a set of drill bits. But you know, these titanium nitrate coated ones and the step bits are really good. I actually buy these ones from Harbor Freight and they work great because I'm not cutting through grade eight steel or anything, but those work great for most jobs. Also for battery terminals, you can add a little impact adapter and I use this every day. This is like the best setup in the world right here. I mean, just look at that, the versatility. If you do not have one of these, you should buy one of all these tools. But yeah, the electrical tools and the crimpers, you need to buy those too. There is no way I would do any of these videos if I didn't have these tools. These tools are my absolute favorites. And if you have the right tools, it will also be easier. It will require less effort. I can build batteries in minutes because I have the right tools for the job. My dad's a mechanic and he's a tool junkie, so he's taught me all about this stuff. But yeah, once you find your favorite tools, you do not want to deviate, except for crimpers. I just ordered like three huge crimpers, and I'm going to tell you guys which one I like because I'm not sure yet. I'm actually very happy that during this video, we figured out that this thing can be fixed because I am so happy. There was nothing else that you could actually adjust in here. I was looking at this, the tolerances because it was like wiggling right here. But yeah, I just needed to tighten that little screw. I can't believe I didn't see that. Anyways, sometimes you have to fix your tools too, and you have to lube them and take care of them. So those are my favorite tools. We have a big old pile, you guys, look at that. But I have other tools. I mean, look at this box, it's filled with them. Anyways, I hope you guys don't spend too much money and I hope your wives don't get too mad at you because you're probably gonna buy some of these. These are, things are awesome. Also, if you disagree with me and you have a better tool to recommend for any of these, please let me know. I will buy it in an instant if you say that it's way better than any of these. Some people might say, why aren't you using a fluke meter? Well, I don't want to spend all of that money and the accuracy does not matter for solar systems. If it's even down to 0.1% accuracy, I'm set. This is like a 0.01 and this always agrees with people's flukes. So I like it and Klein is a great company. These are all UL listed high quality devices. So yeah, I dig it. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys like this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.